Control on to car 59, clear code 7, KMA 394. Car 50T at Overland and Denton, traffic accident, ambulance follow up, hit and run felony involved, code 3. All units in the vicinity, be on the lookout for black sedan, out of state plates, no further description. Maybe southbound on Overland. Should have heavy damage to right side of the car. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. You're riding in a detective unit. Black sedan, radio buried in glove compartment. No identification as a police car. Driving, Sergeant Ron Perkins. We're all dressed in civilian clothes. Sports suit, overcoats. This is Detective Unit 5-6 on the night watch. At the moment, we're uh, checking southbound traffic, looking for a hit-and-run driver. And while you're with us tonight, remember, the people you meet are not actors. You're listening just as it happens, because this is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound is authentic. Wherever Detective Unit 5-6 is called, you follow as the official police recorder transcribes the investigation. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We transfer you now to Detective Unit 5-6, operating somewhere in the field, and to police recorder Don Reed. Uh, checked out the southbound traffic looking for this uh, hit and run suspect. So far, no luck. Here's a quick picture. Arriving at the scene of the crash. Siren clearing a path through the traffic. Two door coupe rolled over inside, demolished. Traffic car, ambulance on the scene. Flares throwing out weird shadows. Huh? Strong smell yeah. of gasoline in the air. Man lying across the seat, bleeding profusely. Ambulance attendants administering first aid. Woman standing next to car. Police blanket around her. Eyes glazed. Obvious shock condition. Calling through the broken glass. Don't move. Are you all right? All right. Are you all right? Can I hang on you? Look at our car. Do you want to tell me what happened? I don't know what happened out there. Look at our sit, car. Sit the car no, uh, we were just driving along and he hit our car. Did you see what kind of car he had? No, I didn't see nothing. It was so quick. Everything will be all right. They'll have you down to the hospital in a little while. Your husband's okay. Uh, he's You'll hurt. Okay. He's hurt. Come here, honey. What's the matter, honey? Are you all right? Honey? We're going to the hospital, baby. What are they doing to me, honey? Look at our car, baby. Oh, look, look at it. Hit Husband placed on stretcher, staring at wreckage of car, moving him into the ambulance. Uh, up here. Look at our car. Wife up front. Disappearing in the traffic. Well, we got them on their way. Not the only ones we got on their way. Take a look at this. Where'd you find that? Jamming the grill work of the car over there. Well, what do you know? An out-of-state license plate. Let's get this on the air. And that guy took off after clobbering that car. You figured he had it made. Except for one thing. That's his calling card. Five six to control one. Control one to five six. Go ahead. Uh, five six. Uh, we have additional information on the hit and run felony at Overland and Denton. The suspect's license plate was dropped at the scene. We advise all of the. Control one 
Climatic conditions tonight are not exactly conducive to high-speed runs. There's a heavy fog pouring in off the ocean. Actually, we won't turn our red light on. It uh, reflects into the fog, makes it tougher to see. But we're rolling in second gear now. Gives us better control. Don't have too far to go. There goes our windshield wipers on. It helps a little bit. But we're going to have to crawl all the way. Now, this call, a um, woman screaming for help, could mean anything. It's a case of not crossing your bridges to get get there. Wait and see what happens. A couple more blocks to go and we're in business. I'll roll this window down, maybe it'll help a little bit. You see that sign over there? Wait a minute, I can't even make it out. Up a little more. Yeah, yeah, this is it. This maple. Well, at least we've found the street. That narrows it down. It's so foggy in here, you can't even see the houses. And here comes the black and white car from the other direction. At least I think it is. It's something with a flock of red lights on it. Well, this is it. Figure standing on the curb. Headlights of the other car silhouetting. Now our headlights. Woman caught in the crossbeams, waving. Uniformed officers, Blumenstein and Walter, hustling over with us. Woman, tiny, short sleeve dress, trembling, tears, hair wet and stringy. Excuse me. My husband, my husband and my mother-in-law have been drinking quite a bit. I only had one small cocktail. They've been drinking for hours now. My husband and my mother and my mother-in-law want to take my little girl away. Please don't let she her. She wants to take your little girl away? Please don't let her. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you like to tell us the whole story from, from the beginning so that we can... My husband said he was going to kill me. I only weigh 98 pounds and he's a great big bully. All he's right. not going to beat me well, up anymore. He's, he's not going to beat you. Is your husband here? Yes. Husband coming out of house. Very tall. Wife. Arms around officer. Hiding. <clears throat> your wife's complaining. <clears throat> a little trouble in the house. You've been drinking quite a bit. It's not true. She's a little bit nervous. She's in the doctor's care for, for a mental breakdown, and she imagines things are not true, and I can prove it. Mm-hmm. Well, now about her story about uh, your mother going uh, to take uh, your child with her or something. She well, usually keeps that? her because she isn't able to keep the child herself. My mother-in-law takes her weekends. I have singing lessons every weekend, and I'm tired weekends, and she keeps her over Saturday night. But I don't want her to take her tonight because she's been drinking too much, and I'm afraid. Well, uh, now you uh, told us when we came here that your husband has been drinking too much He has, too. too. Of course he but, has. Uh, he doesn't appear to me to be too intoxicated. He must hold his liquor very well, then. He certainly been drinking. So, you threatened to kill me, and I had to run next door. I was afraid you threatened to kill me. I did not. You, you did, too. You took away more than you leave me, you said. I did not. You did, too. I got a witness to it. I did not say I was leaving you. you. Cross my heart and hope to die. I did not say well, I was kind of leaving you. What are you under a care of doctor for? Just because a person goes to see a psychiatrist for five months. As soon as I started taking singing lessons, I snapped out of it. You know that. I needed an interest in life besides just housework. Anyway, my singing, I take singing lessons and I'm going to be a singer. I have a voice. I'm going to be a singer and maybe he's jealous. But but well, anyway, he's been being very mean to me lately and tonight it, it started with a quarrel about dinner that we didn't have the dinner on time and the kids were hungry and then it got worse and worse and his mother's been I drinking a lot. Well, I said, your mother did. did. Your mother well, said we didn't have dinner on time. Me. So then he said, so then I said, next time why don't you take a out to Chinatown for dinner, and then there won't be a quarrel about the dinner. And then your mother said, call a taxi, I'm leaving, I've been insulted. (laughs) And so then, (laughs) and so then, then you said, you said, no, I won't call a taxi. So I said, if your mother feels that she's been insulted, by all means, call a taxi. Because I said, I meant no insult. And I said, if you don't like the way I'm acting, I said then, I said, you don't have to stay with me if you don't like, if you're going to criticize me, you don't have to stay with me. 
Oh, what's your uh, she had to drink tonight? One. She had... One small one. Oh, you did have one. Yeah, one small one. one. I admit it. She's intoxicated. She's just confused. No, I'm not intoxicated. Uh, well, she can't get intoxicated. Uh, one small one. Uh, maybe we go inside and talk to your mother-in-law. If you wish to. But before yeah. you go in, I want to just tell you this. That I don't want her going up to your mother's when your mother's been drinking so much. That's the point yeah, I'm making. You only had two small drinks all evening. Darling, your mother has been drinking too well, much. Uh, is it uh, material to you whether uh, your mother takes her or if the baby stays here? Well, I think the baby's safer when mother in law isn't here with us, so she's so upset she might do almost anything. I'm not upset, and I wouldn't do almost anything. Actually, I uh, believe your wife is being fit to take care of the child until she's legally ruled otherwise. Yeah. Moving up on the porch. So I believe the child plays. Middle aged woman the making an appearance. Hair up in curlers. <laughs> Little girl bringing up the rear. Oh, you. You, uh, the kids want to go back inside there? That's the little girl, huh? She's all right. Yeah, yeah, honey. Honey. <coughs> Wife ducking behind officers again. Well, Mother-in-law, you, uh, hands on hips, she's glaring. You think she's been drinking? Oh, well, my woman. No, she's been drinking. Well, uh, she, she's the one that gave, took the first drink, and to be sociable, I drank with her. Mm-hmm. How many, though? I only had one small one. I had two, dear. I only had two. I, I am. You better have a, a psychiatrist examine no, this. Country. I've, oh, that's the I've already been to a psychiatrist for five months. You know that. I came home last night and the child was making some issues about a car's throat. And I took her out of the bathroom before she got a razor blade. That well, is a lie. That is a lie. When I came home looking for a razor I blade. I was not looking for a razor blade. You're that lying. That is true. The child the child, that. the child itself will bear it out. That is a lie. That is not <laughs> officer. Okay, then let me just tell you this and see why there would be a well, razor blade in your cup. I'll tell you what. We'll let your husband decide what to do. Well, one other time, she ordered me out of this house when my son invited me here and I brought some peaches for a child to eat and she came to me and told me I was poisoning the child and for me to go home and never come back to her house. Now that's the truth. Yeah. Don't you dare deny that. Well, yeah. It would be better under, if you never came to the house. I never saw you, my dear. You, you invited her here and told me you bring her here, didn't you? You know you take your mother. Don't lie about this. I didn't lie about the psychiatrist. Almost every time you go up there you take liquor to your mother. I won't see my child sacrificed. I've seen your mother so drunk she fell down. You Don't lie. Haven't well, I, I seen you. your mother so drunk she fell down? I believe you exaggerated to us when we came up here. You said that No, I did not exaggerate to you. You had me believing that your mother-in-law was stumbling drunk. I've seen her stumbling drunk where she fell down. You want to step over here for a minute, sir? I have, and you were there. Look, we appreciate your problem. You know we can't take sides. Your mother seems to be the main source of agitation here, and I'd suggest you take her home. Also suggest that you try to get some more treatment for your wife. If we can help, here's my card. Okay, thank you. Let me. Why don't you give her the word? Wife, out on porch. Husband bending down. Put his arms around her. The baby's going to stay here. I'm glad you did, because if you hadn't, I would have divorced you. I'm glad that you see it my way. Yeah. I want to do anything to make you happy, Derry. Hey, you you've been married 12 years now. There's no reason why you can't be married another 12 years. No <laughs> longer, is there? He's a very smooth worker. I know him. I ought to. Well, if you want to take care of the baby, you better go in the house and take care of the baby Not while, with he, him. while he takes his mother home. See? When I see you and your mother drive off, I'll go in the house. Not till then. I know you. If you were a woman, you'd understand. Please take her home and don't bring her back anymore. Husband, taking off coat, putting around wife, has mother-in-law by the hand, heading for car, disappearing in the fog. Thanks a lot, Bluey. We'll see you guys later. You know, seeing all these things makes a guy wonder about getting married. Yeah, doesn't change my mind any. Listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 56 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. And now, back to Night Watch as we return you to Detective Unit 56, somewhere in the field, and your official police recorder, Don Reed. Cars 50 and 5056 and 51 district at 2205 Welltone. Check 
2205, well tone. Tower in the back car now, code 2. 501, 10-4. Uh, 5 6, Roger, we're in the area. We'll approach on well tone and check out the house from the front. Uh, 5 0 5 6, we're just north of that location. Uh, we'll come in through the alley. Uh, Roger, 5 0. Prowler call. Reported in the backyard. We'll take the front. Radio car will come in through the alley. This is about our third prowler call. The same general area in the past few days. Hold on. Probably of all the types of calls received, this is the most difficult to pinpoint. You'll be able to turn up with anything. Stray cats trying to get into a house. Wind blowing wire against the screen. Then again, just a good old-fashioned burglar trying to break in. We're within a couple of blocks now. Fog is cleared. There goes off our lights. Rest the way in the dark. Checking the streets for anything out of the ordinary. There's two figures coming out of a driveway. Girl to boy. Arms around each other. Not very good burglary suspects. It's dark. There's a porch light on the middle of the block. Probably it. Right. Let's hit the number of checks. Five six code six on well tone. Five six ten four. Detective to the rear. We'll cover the front. Young woman standing on the porch. Bathrobe pulled tight around her throat. Trembling. They just tried to keep the puppy in. You want to come through here? The puppy barked. And last week, my milkman. Money was stolen from the floor. Afraid to go to bed night. I thought after they took the money last week, maybe they'd come back, you know, thinking I'd put it out again. Oops. Hope the dog. You're a little late, huh? Flashlight signal from the back. Nothing out there. And I can hear footsteps. I know that it's not a cat or anything. Yeah. And the other night, my neighbor was telling me someone came over her wall. They just came over from the back property there. So I'm getting so I'm afraid to go to bed because it's no sooner than the house is dark. But it seems there's somebody out here. Did you have your lights, uh, did you have your lights on in the house? Well, I always hear it after I go to bed and all the lights are off. And I thought, well, since they took my money last week, you know, I yeah. put the milkman's money out, that possibly they'd come back thinking I'd put it out again. No, no. But my husband's been in the hospital for 14 months, and I'm just getting scared to go to bed at night. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I would like to have you do in the future. Uh, first place, uh, we'll leave word up at the desk so the cars can give you good protection down here. But next time you hear anything, don't turn any lights on. To just dial the operator and say you have an emergency, you want the Culver City Police. She'll connect you immediately. You give the man your address. Tell him that there's somebody in your yard right now. And then just do it without them looking in. If they, if they can look in the house and they see you go to the phone, or if you turn the light on, they're going to take off where we can get here. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way we'll be able to get them if you'll just quietly notify the police and then just stay inside till we get down here. No, sorry. So if you'll do that, well, we'll have a chance to get them for you next time. Well, I hope so, because golly me, I'm going to get my eyes to get plugging out and staying up and reading. Well, Come on, baby, you, you don't have to worry. We'll, we'll be out here to help you on that. Oh, fine. Thank you for coming down. Good night. Well, you go lay down, baby. Good night. You can't come in the house. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Back to our radio unit. Control one calling us on the air. Five six, code one. Five six, code one. Five six, go ahead. One to detective unit five six. Car five zero wants you to contact them. Code two. Five zero, can you read five six? Uh, five zero to five six. Uh, we're in the alley directly behind you. Uh, found a juvenile suspect hiding back here. Uh, you want to meet him? Five six, Roger. I'll be right there. Swinging around to get into the alley. Radio car in the rear, holding a juvenile suspect, found hiding back there. Just a bit bumpy in here. Now, here's our main alley. 
pitch dark. Radio car. Spotlight trained on uniformed officers. Young boy here in custody. What do you got, Bill? We were uh, cruising through the alley back here, and uh, we found this young fellow hiding behind the telephone pole over there. I don't know if he's got anything to do with the uh, prowler call or not, but uh, Sergeant Dirk's over there talking to him. Okay, let's go over and check him out. Suspect, 10, 11 years, butch haircut, hands on hips, defiant. I didn't do anything. Well, why did you walk down the alley? I always walk down the alley. Well, you always walk down the alley. I always walk down this one. You can ask anybody. Why don't you walk down the street like a normal person would? I don't know. I just walk down the alleys. And you're going straight home? Yes. Where were you before I saw you, though? I was up there walking down. You weren't in this yard at all. I just walked over here, down here. You weren't in the yard? Yes. You wouldn't lie to us, would you? I'm not lying, sir. What else have you been taken into the juvenile officer for? Nothing. No curfew violation? No. Just for entering that boy's house? Yes. What if this lady identified you? Well, let her identify me. Let her have a look at me. You still weren't around the house at all? I still wasn't. Let her have a look at me. Okay. Okay, let's go. How old are you? Twelve. You know, you shouldn't be out wandering up and down these alleys, right. regardless of whether you use it for a regular route or not. Because you'll always be questioned if you're intercepted by the police unit. Well, you can ask this man. I was walking down the alley. And well, I look, let's there. square something away there right now. If there was time enough for you to jump over that wall, run up there and hide behind a telephone pole, and then start walking back here nonchalantly. All right, but I didn't. Let the lady look at me. She didn't see you. Then what do you want me for? Because I think you were in the yard. Turn around. Checking out the young fellow's pockets. Very determined look. Sarcastic smile. Sort of dares the officers to find out anything. You better change your route home. Why? Right. And but, start walking down the street. But I always ride down the street. I don't care camp. what you always do down here. Stay out of the alleys. You stay out of the alleys and stay on the regular routes of travel, you won't be in any trouble. If we catch you wandering down these alleys again, you're going into the juvenile officer. And if you go in often enough, you'll go to, to a juvenile home. Now, understand that. You have no business walking down these back alleys or through backyards. Maybe or maybe not, you weren't in this yard. But you're in this area. It makes you a likely suspect. And if there's many more such incidents, you're going to be in trouble. Understand? Yes, sir. Bill, can I see a minute? Yeah. He uh, probably caused the prowler call and won't be able to prove it. So uh, I suggest if it's okay with you and uh, Dirks that you call the juvenile car and let him take him home and talk to his parents. Okay, Perk, will do. We'll see you later. Uh, 2200 block on Welcome. It's a nervy little guy roaming around the alleys this time of night. Now, some neighbor take a pot shot at him, he won't have as much nerve. What you have just heard is real, recorded as it actually happened on the Night Watch. We switch you now back to headquarters and the desk of Police Chief W. N. Hildebrand. The first investigation tonight involving the hit-and-run driver resulted in the suspect being taken into custody the following day when the detective bureau traced the license plate dropped at the scene. The maximum penalty for hit-and-run is one to five years in the state prison. The second case of the disturbance revolving around a mother-in-law resulted in the recommendation that the wife have further psychiatric treatment for nervous disorder. The final interrogation of the young boy found loitering in an alley late at night was returned home by juvenile officers and his parents advised. 
In the overall pattern of police work, this case will be filed away with hundreds of others, but it is important in one respect. Every person, juvenile and adult alike, reaches a series of crossroads. A wrong turn, and overnight, a potentially good citizen could be turned into a criminal. I cite, for example, the hit-and-run driver tonight. The case of the 12-year-old boy roaming alleys at 1 o'clock in the morning is a violation of curfew, an offense in itself, but a serious situation could have developed had it continued. This is one of the crossroads of which we speak. To point up what can be done to control juvenile delinquency is one of the reasons for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty on The Night Watch. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch is brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins and described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed. Night Watch is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock. <laughs>